basically what we're going to do today is talk about um, Rhino and how it relates to 3D printing. And it's something that I've been doing for a long time. Um, it's something that actually I started doing very early in my 3D career um, when I was actually, uh, I started off actually using Alias um, in 1993, 94, back before it had a GUI, it was still uh, blue buttons. And the very earliest experience that I had with 3D printing was um, was trying to figure out how to get an alias model into a 3D printer. And we did it, and it was a really big deal in 1993. And um, uh, the company that I was working for at the time uh, was, was a fairly low-tech company. And so when I dropped this on the desk of my boss, he basically looked at me like I was from outer space. And uh, so that kind of set the tone for how I felt about 3D printing for a long time and so I, I have literally been doing it <clears throat> for about well what 93 about getting close to 20 years now so so the technology has improved dramatically it's nowhere near as hard as it used to be in fact it's actually very simple uh, if you uh, take the uh, amount of knowledge that I'm going to pour into a thimble here and put up on the put up on this video for you guys. I think it uh, will be something that you'll you'll find uh, is fairly successful. So uh, we're going to do this in about in three sections. The first thing we're going to talk about is is what it means to be watertight, what watertight means, and how to analyze that with some of the tools that Rhino has available. Um, we're going to look at uh, this model here, which is essentially what we're going to classify as a quote good model for rapid prototyping and we're going to talk about what that is and why it is, uh, how to determine what's good versus what's bad. Um, and we're going to talk about mesh settings. And I'm going to tell you I'm going to show you the settings that I've been using for forever. And then I'm also going to show you some settings that uh, uh, Dale Lear, who is uh, the mesh guru at, at McNeil, kind of shook his head when I showed him my settings and said, you're adorable. How about you use these instead? So <laughs> I'll show you I'll show you what I've been using for decades and I'll show you what Dale just told me to start using, which actually makes a lot more sense. So that's the difference between someone who has a math background and someone who went to art school. So the second section, uh, we're going to look at what a non-watertight object is. Uh, we'll, we'll show uh, how to use the edge analysis uh, toolbox here and and how to identify where the problems are, how to fix them, talk about different strategies for doing so. Um, we'll talk about the right way to fix things, uh, which would be the, you know, and I'm using air quotes here that you can't see, um, the right way to fix things, and then we'll talk about the, <clears throat> the Kyle Houchins got to get out of work by five on Friday because you've got better things to do than sit in a studio until four o'clock in the morning uh, way of getting it done. Uh, we'll mesh the part and uh, verify that it's good. Uh, the third section, we're going to open a non-watertight mesh, which actually we will create in section two. Uh, we'll talk about how to fill mesh holes, patches, etc. Um, we'll talk about uh, the match mesh edge tool and talk about how the ratchet function in that works. And then we'll look at, uh, we'll, we'll simulate some really extreme cases where say you just absolutely got a garbage mesh that you have to throw uh, into uh, into a printer uh, and how to how to take that um, and then we'll talk a little bit about building styles um, and I'll show you some ideas on what I use uh, when I'm doing things for clients when there's a possibility of having to edit it later after you send it to them and they say uh, hey uh, this is great but we need it to be uh, four and a half percent more happy and then you have to go figure out what that means and, and adjust it. So we'll talk about how to do all that stuff. All right, so the first thing I wanna jump into is talk about what it means to be watertight. And the very simplest tool in Rhino to find out whether something is watertight or not is to use the select open poly surface tool. Select open poly surfaces tool. And you can do it in the command line, cell open poly surf, click it, this is what you want to see. No objects added to selection. If, for instance, I were to extract a surface, okay, let's just pull one out, and I were to run cell open polysurf, it lights up. Now, the model lit up, but the window didn't. Why is that? Well, because this is a polysurface that's open, 
because we asked it to select open poly surface. This is just a surface. If this was split into two pieces and joined, that would light up too because it's open. So let's put this, put this back together for now. The very first thing that you're going to want to check for is cell open polysurf. All right. If it passes that, the next thing you want to do is we want to run cell bad. And cell bad is something that is going to, Rhino's going to evaluate your model. It's going to take a look at it and it's going to say, hey, are there any self-intersecting surfaces? Is there anything that's open? Are there any problems that it can diagnose to see that this is this is going to cause an issue down the line? And if we run cell bad and get nothing, then we know we're in pretty good shape here. Okay, so basically what, uh, if we look at, do, 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 in here, uh, oh boy, with the smaller screen, it changes my toolbar setup. Ah, here we go. Okay, I got to find everything again. Sorry. All right, so this is where cell open polysurf lives, all the way under here, under the normals, uh, analyze direction. Fly this out, you'll see this little red and green box. This is the show naked edges, which is this toolbox right here. And then underneath that is cell open polysurf. There's also some other tools in here that we're going to talk about as far as split edge, merge edge, all that kind of stuff, but we're going to get to that later. Um, also under here lives my favorite icon in the whole Rhino toolbox, which is the cell bad objects, the skull and crossbones of doom here. All right, if you hit this button and something lights up on your model, there's a problem and, uh, and we need to figure out a way to fix it. All right, so watertight essentially means exactly what it, what it sounds like. If you think of a water balloon, all right, if you fill a water balloon up and tie the top of it and no water comes out, that means it's watertight, obviously, right? If it's got a hole in it and there's water squirting out the back, woo, out here, all right, then you know you've got a problem, you need to fix it. The edge analysis toolbox, which also lives under here, right here, um, is going to be the fastest way for you to identify whether or not there's any issues in this model. So to do this, I'm going to pick the I'm going to pick the model. I'm going to pick add objects, and it's going to say, okay, there's 1,979 edges total. There's no naked edges, and there's no non-manifold edges. These are two very key things that you want to pay attention to. All right, if it comes up where there's uh, uh, even a single naked edge, that means the model is not watertight. That means it will also fail the cell open polysurf uh, and it will light up. And, um, and um, it will, you know, basically, essentially, we're looking at something that's not watertight here. So these are the checks that you want to run. Cell open polysurf. If it lights up, that's the very first thing. Say, say you had 50 things in a scene, right? Say we, say we had say we had this and we'll just just do this really quick to do, 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 do. let's just array these linear and let's do let's do 30 of these and we're going to go here and we're going to do this all right say we had a scene that was very complicated and one of them had a little tiny problem all right and let's just say, for instance, that we don't have that on. All right, we've got a big scene. There's a million things in it, right? And I want to find out if these are all watertight. Well, the very first thing I'm going to do, cell open polysurf. Oh, look at that. Out of all of this stuff, that one lit up. So what that tells me is I need to zoom in here. I need to select this one, hide everything else, and figure out now where are the naked edges using the edge analysis? Well, it's right there. Well, I can see that this is a separate surface from this. So in this particular case, all I need to do is join it, run show naked edges again, no naked edges, run select open polysurf, nothing comes back. So I bring back my my armada here and I turn it back on. Now, now it passes. So all of these things are good. So this is, a, this is a very quick way of getting through a scene or a, you know, or a very complicated model and identifying if any of these things have issues. All right, so watertight, good, cell open polysurf, uh, show naked edges, and cell bad. Those are the three things that if, if the Rhino model passes those three checks, you can pretty much 
sleep well knowing that when you send this to a service bureau, they are going to be able to print it with no problem. All right.